everybody. Once again, this is Fred Wanko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bold Talk on Allen TV. And today, um, you're going to find out that the plot just keeps thickening. And our topics just keep getting better and hitting harder. And why am I hitting harder? We have one country, guys. Just one country. We don't have two. It, this, ep, this episode is going to be about comparing and contrasting different topics that have been trending in the last two weeks. And the reason I want to compare and contrast those topics is because when it comes to what's going on in Nigeria, we let tribalism, all of us, Igbos, Yorubas, Fulanis, everybody, we let tribalism cloud our thinking, cloud our common sense. And we forget that when it's all said and done, every one of us, especially the ones who have achieved, owe everything we've achieved to being Nigerian, not being Yoruba, not being Igbo, not being Fulani. But when it comes to building this place that has given, given us so much, all of a sudden we want to be Yorubas and Igbos and all that stuff. And why am I getting into all that? I'm getting into all that because you're going to find that the topics that I address today and the videos I try to play to you will really show you how vain Nigerians have become, how vain we've become as Igbos, how vain we've become as Yorubas or Fulanese, especially, especially those three tribes. How many ways do I need to explain to people that this whole thing and my mission with my bull talk has nothing to do with being Igbo or being Yoruba? It has to do with being Nigerian and being a progressive. In this last election, February 25th and March 18th, I don't care which way you slice it. The thugs in Lagos were wrong. The person who sent the thugs out and the people who support that shame that happened in Lagos and try to make excuses about it and then go out seeking out every kind of stupid stuff that an Igbo person said or didn't say to tie it to, oh, well, did you hear what this Igbo person said? To hell with what this Igbo person said. Tell me about what Fred Mwankwa said or what Emeko Konkwa said. What well, one Igbo person said doesn't represent what every Igbo person does. Just like the thuggery and the bigotry of Yorubas that support that has nothing to do with Yoruba progressives. And I've said this time after time after time. The reason the obedient movement was so successful was not because of Igbos. It was about progressive Yorubas and progressive Nigerians, Edozi, Jaws, Ibibios, Fulanis, Hausas, Middle Belters, that came out in mass, folks, not to support P2B, but to support change, change to make Nigeria a free, fair, equitably governed society. And instead of addressing issues that relate to changing Nigeria to a better place, bigots and divide and conquer politicians want to make it an issue about Igbos and Yorubas. And to address that, I'm going to play you a video that's been trending. And it was at the uh, one year anniversary celebration of uh, Governor Saludo of Anambra State. And at that event, Chief Emmanuel Iwanyang, who is the chairman of the Elders Council of Ohaneze, took the mic, congratulated the celebrant, but he also addressed the beating up of Igbos, the suppression of Igbo votes, and killing of 
Igbo people in Lagos at the last election on February, on March 18th. And in doing so, he preempted what's causing the controversy by making it clear that there is no problem between Igbos and Yorubas. But instead of transitioning correctly to what's causing this controversy, he said, Yorubas are political rascals. There's no way he could call Yorubas political rascals in the same sentence or this, with the sentence preceding that, saying that Igbos and Yorubas are friends. He started out what he's saying by being conciliatory to Yorubas and making it clear that we don't have problems with Yorubas. What he meant to say was, however, the thugs that came out and killed Igbos and suppressed votes are Yoruba political rascals. There's nothing to apologize about. Those thugs and the person who sent them are Yoruba political rascals. Just like the pocketed Igbos in the East <coughs> that have been taking money from the Fulani Cabal and the Yoruba divide and conquer cabal and selling out Igbos and underdeveloping Igbo land. Those are Igbo political rascals too. Chief Iwanyamu has nothing to apologize to anybody about. And I'm glad he made it clear that Yorubas and Igbos are friends. And I'll make it clear again. The obedient movement wouldn't have any traction if it wasn't for the involvement and the overwhelming support of progressive Yorubas. And whoever is not happy about being called Yoruba political rascals, I have a question for you. What do you call thugs who go out and kill people? What do you call thugs who go out and destroy election material? What do you call thugs that are sent out to make it possible for an election to be stolen? And what makes me sick about this is that some of the people who bring these things up are very highly educated, enlightened people. All because of Tiwani Tiwa. And again, listen to me carefully so you don't quote me wrong. To hell with Tiwani Tiwa when Tiwani Tiwa leads to bad things. And I'm, I am all in support of Tiwani Tiwa when Tiwani Tiwa has something to do with pride. The pride of Yorubas is something that nobody can take away from them. Yorubas are one of the most progressive, most innovative Nigerians. But they are not more innovative than any other people. Nigerians are very innovative. Why don't we stop thinking that ours is better than the others, just like the Igbo man who comes out in Lagos or any place else and tries to act like his is better than anybody else? No. All of us Nigerians are as good as every other good Nigerian. And all of us who do bad things in Nigeria do as bad things as any other tribe in Nigeria does. And there is no point in trying to shield and cover up bad things that your people do. When Igbos do wrong, I call them out. You as a Yoruba person with your education, stand up and call out evil for God's sake. Guys, listen to what Chief Iwanyangu said. Emmanuel Iwanyangu, during the ceremony, also took the opportunity to condemn the recent attacks on the Igbos in Lagos. His statement has, however, generated reactions from a cross-section of Nigerians. Let's take a listen before we come back for a discussion. I want to, I, I saw the a trader association coming here from Lagos. I want to let our people in Lagos to know 
we have resolved that never, never again can we allow anybody to take the life of any innocent Igbo person. All of us are going to fight the person. Never again. We are in Nigeria and we have invested in Nigeria. Our investments are so much. We are not going to take the question of people telling us to go. We are not going anywhere. And I want to tell those in Lagos to realize that uh, uh, there is no war between us and Eurobas. Eurobas are with us. They are just political rascals. And we are going to... The preceding sentence was Yorubas are with us and they are just political rascals. Yes, let me explain it. It sounded like he said Yorubas are political rascals, but that's not what he said. He said Yorubas are with us. And to complete for him what he did not say, and it is just the political rascals that we are addressing. He's not addressing Yoruba people, but they divide and conquer Yorubas. They've done this since the war ended in 1970. But Igbos are not going to take this anymore. Guys, I'm saying this very bluntly, and I know that it's annoying to the bigots. It's annoying to them because they don't want to hear the truth. They like to run with the lies they formulate in their heads. Igbos don't let them come to Igbo land. Igbos don't let Yoruba people come to Igbo land. Igbos don't let Yoruba people buy property. A bunch of garbage. And I'm sick and tired of it. And I'm not going to take it. And I have bull talk on Allen TV. And I'm going to use it as a bullhorn to challenge all the garbage that the press has conveniently been selling anti-Ibo propaganda since the war ended. But this is no longer that old Western Nigeria controlled press. We now have Arise TV. I didn't say Ibo's have Arise TV. I said Nigeria now has a rise TV and the world now has social media and not all social media is garbage. Mine is not garbage. Mine is fact checking you. It makes you sick, but I'm going to make you sick until you sit back and go look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I going to be objective and open minded the way I look at Nigeria? Am I going to be? Am I going to keep playing in Nigeria of Tiwa Nitiwa? If you want to play Tiwa Nitiwa, progressive Yorubas are leaving you behind. You could play your Tiwa Nitiwa all you want, and you're going to keep fighting Igbos. But Igbos are going to fight you back. As long as we are not doing anything wrong to anybody, Igbos owe nobody any apologies in Nigeria. Negotiate with us on our terms. Don't negotiate with us on Ojikalo's terms and Shimaroke's terms and Rochas's terms. Enough of that nonsense. We're not taking it anymore. Now, let me start winding down with uh, some of these mercenaries that call themselves spokespeople for APC who talk from two sides of their mouths. And I like bringing these things out as I find them so that the bigots who support what Bodilon is doing and support his stolen mandate can listen to what the same people who are speaking for him this time have said about him in the past. We we'll find ourselves now. And also, am I here to think that the APC is the best thing to happen to Nigeria? I'll be a fool to say so. Am I here to say that there are no thieves within the APC? I'll be a fool to say so. Will I be here to defend the APC as the purest political party, as the, as the, as the cure all and be all, and the, you know, and the, and the, and the cure, all cure lags that we have been looking for? I'll be a fool to say so. The real reason Senator Tinumbu nominated Oshibajo has been made known to us 
and we hereby offer a public service to the Nigerian people by drawing national attention to it. Credible pieces of information at our disposal indicate that Tinumbu has perfected plans to come to power through the back door. Senator Tinumbu, according to our information, has compelled Professor Oshibajo to swear to an oath that after six months in office, he would resign as the vice president in the unlikely event that their party wins. The wicked plot, as laid out by them, is to force Pref Professor Oshibajo to resign for Senator Tinumbu to be nominated by General Bahari as his replacement. The ultimate objective of this plot is to ensure that Tinumbu becomes president. The script is simple. Given the questionable health status of General Buhari, Senator Tinumbu, who is desperate to be president for his own selfish reasons, will simply bide his time in the evil expectation that General Buhari will not be able to go the whole hog. We have deemed it fit to let the whole world know why the leadership of the APC is desperate for power and why the cabal controlling the APC is hell-bent to ensure that General Buhari becomes president. Our candid advice to General Buhari is this, watch your back. I said that Bola Tinubu rigged the February 25, 2023 elections uh, to emerge as the president-elect. But then I have said publicly that I also feel that Peter Obi actually did some rigging by himself. Because if when I look at the figures that he posted from Anambra State, you know, getting almost 97% of the vote, uh, I mean, I felt that maybe there was some, uh, will I say, shenanigans going on. And then he went on Arise Television, he responded to me uh, in his interview, I think this was uh, about a week ago, less than a week ago, and he said, look, he's surprised that he didn't even get um, 100% in Anambra because he's so popular. Well, you know, I took that with a pinch of salt, but then today I've seen an event. It's just, it's still happening right now. It's the one year ceremony in office of, uh, one year anniversary in office uh, for the incumbent governor, uh, Governor Charles Soludo in Anambra is ongoing right now. And Peter will be just walk into the room. And, you know, I mean, the applause was like thunder. You know, it was like thunder. He said, the former governor is coming. I mean, I can see how, because obviously he's more popular than the incumbent governor with what we're seeing. So yeah, you know, maybe I might want to uh, walk back what I said, you know, about him getting, I can see that it's quite possible that he could have gotten 97% of the votes without Reagan. Because when I see that, when I just, what, you're going to see it, you know what, after this conversation, you're going to see it. And that is organic law because everybody knows uh, Peter Obi, you know, they give shishi. You know, if you are Nigerian, you know what that means. That means he's like, he's, he's very thrifty. I'm not going to say he's stingy. Let me just say he's, he's very, he's very thrifty. So I just shake my head, guys. But, um, like he was to say, Okurunja, that was a Reno or mockery. The obedient movement is always open. We welcome every talent we can find. But when you join when you join the obedient movement, bring your best to the obedience. We don't want lying on people. We don't like taking shishi to sell out your people. We accept all talent, but we just want to change Nigeria. And I'm gonna play an interview that the former chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association had talking about the last election, the rigging of the last election, and the laws that uh, go with declaring a candidate the winner. I just want to play to conclude. There are other videos I wanted to add, but I'm trying to keep this under 30 minutes. Um, just listen. Section 134 stipulates who to be declared an issued certificate of return. 
it is only that candidate that has scored the uh, highest number of votes and at least 25 percent in uh, each in at least two thirds percent to two thirds of the states of the federation and the federal capital territory right. it is very clear tinumbu does not have 25 percent in the fct we denied him we got 61 percent atiku does not have 21 uh, uh, 25 percent in the fct we denied both of them by the clear unambiguous provision of the nigerian constitution which must not be breached tinimbo has not satisfied the requirement to be declared president-elect accordingly yeah. there is no president-elect for nigeria now i repeat accordingly there is no president-elect for nigeria at the moment because the declared one violates the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria these petitions mm, i've lost a bit of confidence in in what the courts have been doing lately i mean there was a time you could say oh on the facts and the law this is the likely outcome today you cannot because there have been all kinds of silly decisions the most silly was that concerning the president of the senate who in order to become nigerian president rushed off to buy a ticket to be a presidential candidate of the apc and that meant he did not take part in the senatorials lo and behold he lost he now ran back after the horse had bolted clearly to anybody who has any brain including the justice of the supreme court i might add and they said no that the man actually should be the senatorial candidate that is the most most ridiculous decision i've ever heard that the supreme court had delivered so that's why it's difficult of course i don't want to talk about the case of emo state where everything was turned upside down so i don't have the sort of confidence that i used to have in the judiciary and i've not been surprised if this thing goes one way or the other i cannot i cannot forecast the outcome i have the legal tools and the factual issues so if i put it into my computer i know what answer it will give me but i'm not part of the panel so i don't know whether the justices will see it the way i'm seeing it but i can tell you from my own perspective as a lawyer for the five years at the bar that the answers are glaringly obvious there's a new school of thinking coming up to say should the supreme court really be final see what they're causing now should they be final or should their decisions not be subject to parliamentary review it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an argument that is now growing in judicial circles the confidence that is eroding for people be, to begin to think what the hell can we do something to these people that's what's happening but, ah, i mean seven men just come out sit down on the chair and read something and we say okay that governor is sacked why who are these people you should be taken seriously that would not have happened 20 years ago when these men come out you fear them when you see them come out and when they speak they speak without fear of evil is it the same thing now i don't wow. know i just keep shaking my head that's a highly reputed legal brain in Nigeria and the things he said there are not just things you should take on the surface they are things that deep thinkers really sit down and psychoanalyze what he really said and what he really meant but the reason I wanted to play that and play it to the end is that it actually applies again to what's going on in Western Nigeria. When Papa Wolowo was alive, when the elders in Western Nigeria came up with an idea and came up with a stand, whether you like what they were saying or not, you respected them. Because a lot of times their wisdom, if not all the times, 
But a lot of times, their wisdom was what other parts of the country wanted to emulate. But all of a sudden, even very well-educated people from this region are now buying into a divide and conquer philosophy that really makes me embarrassed when I hear some of the things. They listen to my social media message and then they come back asking me things I know that even they do not believe. And they're simply taking those positions simply because Tiwani Tiwa. But as usual, this has been another potpourri of different ideas that I'm throwing at you from different angles. If I'm wrong, please come up with something logical. Don't come up with some abstract stupidity trying to defend the disgrace that happened in Lagos on March 18th. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Fred Mwanko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bold Talk on Allen TV. And until next time, good night and God bless. See